Welcome again right now. Ivan Tony left in difficult transfer conundrum as Arsenal make call on big money move. Ivan Tony previously had a clutch of the Premier League big boys chasing his signature before his ban, but the Brentford star now seems unlikely to secure the huge move that he has been talking up. If ever a player's reputation grew in his absence, then it has to be Ivan Tony. By the time Tony came back from his eight-month ban, he was talking about going to Real Madrid, his valuation rocketed to 80 million, and he was supposed to be the hottest striker in world football. No one is doubting Tony's talent. He is a terrific striker and has done brilliantly for Brentford, and Brentford have done brilliantly for him. But it does feel like he was on a hiding to nothing after his return to regular football. How could he possibly live up to such expectation levels? The simple answer is that he couldn't. In fairness, that was not all down to him. His reputation went from Premier League striker on the fringes of the England squad to world beater during his eight-month absence. Tony did talk himself up and his ambitions for the future. But it wasn't all on him. Arsenal were definitely keen on him as the ice-cool striker they needed to be ruthless up front. That interest has now waned. It is highly unlikely he will be signing for Arsenal this summer. Neither will Alexander Isak, who keeps being linked with a move to Arsenal from Newcastle. Arsenal monitored the player when he went to Newcastle, but no longer retain an interest, especially not at the mooted price of 120 million euro. Arsenal will look for someone younger, and after seeing Kai Havertz as success, they can be patient and blend a player into the squad which speaks to a younger signing. Tony, meanwhile, is 28 and in a rush. There will be interested clubs, and Tottenham, Chelsea, and Manchester United are certain to have looked at a player who will have a year left on his contract this summer. There is no doubting he is a good striker, and despite his form, could go to the Euros. Now England have the option of naming a 26-man squad. But surely Ollie Watkins has moved ahead of him. Tony scored for England in March and looks a good player who Gareth Southgate likes. But he has not scored for Brentford since mid-February and has only got four goals since his return from suspension. That surely does not make him an 80 million euro player? Needless to say, people are now writing 40 million euro, which may not be enough but is more realistic. It could be his final game for Brentford this weekend. I think he will go to the Euros as England's joker in the pack. Great in a shootout. But will he get a top, top move? That's harder to say. He may be better served seeing out the final year at Brentford, and then, as a free agent, surely more clubs would take a chance. Ivan Tony, the rising star striker of Brentford FC, found himself amidst a whirlwind of speculation as the summer transfer window loomed large. His remarkable goal-scoring prowess had caught the attention of several top clubs, with Arsenal emerging as the front-runners in the pursuit of his signature. For Tony, the prospect of joining Arsenal was both tantalizing and daunting. On one hand, it was an opportunity to compete at the highest level of English football, donning the iconic red and white jersey of one of the Premier League's most storied clubs. On the other hand, it meant leaving behind the club where he had found his rhythm and become a fan favorite. As the negotiations between Brentford and Arsenal intensified, Tony found himself torn between loyalty and ambition. Brentford had provided him with the platform to showcase his talent and elevate his career, but Arsenal represented the chance to play on a bigger stage and fulfill his childhood dreams. Lee Watkins this summer and snub a move for Ivan Tony. That is the view of former defender Paul Parker, who has claimed that the Aston Villa centre-forward is the best all-round NO9 in the Premier League. While Rasmus Hojlund has shown flashes of promise in his debut campaign at Old Trafford, despite injury issues, Parker thinks Sir Jim Ratcliffe should target another goal scorer as he begins his overhaul of the club. And while Tony is widely expected to leave Brentford this summer, the ex-fullback is urging United to instead focus their attention on Watkins. Not least because the former is trying to emulate Harry Kane by dropping deep to be involved in link-up play. If you are going to bring in another player to give competition to Hodgland, in my opinion, it's not going to be Ivan Tony. It's going to be somebody of more note than Ivan Tony. 
Parker told my betting sites. You'd say the same about Ivan Tony working with somebody of note. He hasn't had enough points on the board as a Premier League striker to be in the position of having an understudy, in my opinion. Does Ivan Tony play as a center forward? Not really. He's trying to play more like a Harry Kane in that sense. If you're going to bring a center forward in, and you're going to keep him UK-based, in my opinion, you bring in Watkins. But he's going to cost you $100 million and deservedly at that. Ivan Tony, 25 talk to 30 million, but Watkins has proven his worth every time. Parker also suggested that Watkins is not getting due credit for his impressive season for fourth place Villa, because the media are worried about him being a threat to Harry Kane's place in the England team for this summer's European Championship. Watkins has 19 goals and 12 assists in the league, and Parker added, the only thing that goes against him is that the English press don't want to talk about him much. Maybe they're worried about Harry Kane's place. I don't understand why the press doesn't give him kudos at all. His work rate off the ball, look at how many goals he makes. He's so unselfish and still scores goals. In every area, he's the best all-round center forward in the league. Rio Ferdinand questioned why Jadon Sancho has struggled at Manchester United after Winger starred in Borussia Dortmund's Champions League win over Paris Saint-Germain. Sancho looked back to his best as Dortmund beat PSG 1-0 in the first leg of their semi-final clash, with the 24-year-old completing the most dribbles in a Champions League game by an Englishman with 12. In fact, he had completed more dribbles by halftime than he managed in any of his 58 Premier League appearances for United since signing for the club back in 2021. Following a public falling out with Red Devils boss Eric Ten Hag, Sancho returned to Dortmund on loan in January, and Ferdinand felt Sancho's performance against PSG was his best since his first stint at Dortmund, with the United legend questioning why he has been unable to replicate it at Old Trafford. He's shaking and baking top players here, Ferdinand told TNT Sports after the game. He's putting people on the floor. He's making people dance. It was a joke what he did today, and we haven't seen this, probably since he was at Dortmund before. He isn't just a dribbler. He isn't just somebody who runs and runs past people with pace. He's a footballer who wants to come in and play one-twos, be part of the game and the tempo of that game. What I saw today more than anything, which I haven't seen and have been waiting to see, and all Manchester United fans have been waiting to see, I saw cage football Sancho today. This is the kid that grew up in cages, with that arrogance and that little bit of swagger. I've been sitting here saying that it's there, but we haven't seen it. He's in a groove.